Not today, washer. Not today. Well, let's open her up and start the show. Booyah. So today, I'm thinking I'm gonna run a bunch of creature baits, a bunch of stingers, grass grenades. And I wanna run them in a color that I developed about two weeks ago that I did in the action worm, the, uh, the little drop shot worm, 3.6 inch action worm. But I wanna make it in something else. So stay tuned, let's see how it looks. Yeah, so this right here is the stinger mold. It's a four inch uh, creature bait, angling AI mold here. Beautiful details. I absolutely love this thing. Uh, it's a really fun mold uh, to inject. It, uh, it's, it's an easy mold to use. It laminates really well. Um, all these little you know arms and appendages uh, just really add a lot of character to it. Uh, so I think this color is going to work well. Um, so now we're going to get our plastic ready and be prepared to see a lot of these. Yeah, so uh, for today we're going black bucket, swim bait, jerk bait, blend. So we're just going to do a minute or so of mixing. Yeah, you can see that's already getting it, getting it mixed up pretty good there. And what I found is that it mixes better if you kind of mix towards one side than in the center. It just seems to move the plastic more. Um, I don't know, at least with that stirrer right there. But anyway, we're gonna stir up the plastic, then we're gonna build the color. It's a beautiful color. Uh, it's not too difficult, so if you wanna try it at home, I think you can nail this one. And uh, to me, it's very, very beautiful. Okay, here are the ingredients that we're gonna need to do this color. Starting on the left, violet highlight powder, okay? Also known as interference powders. This one has a nice purple violety effect to it. Uh, we have some watermelon pigment there, just straight watermelon 101, one of my favorites from Lureworks. We have some small black flake down there in that little jar, 0.015. Then we also have kind of an odd size, that's 0.040, okay, so 0.04, which is basically the same as medium. Uh, black flake, and then we have 0.035 purple, and gold okay so this is basically the chemical makeup the recipe so to speak uh, we have a lot of plastic here so this is four cups worth and we're going to cook those up in the microwave it's going to take a while so we'll meet you back whenever those are ready kind of an interesting hand pour i did i don't even remember when i did these i was kind of looking at a yellow and blue crawfish and I uh, really love that eye there, the way that it reflects off of those. And uh, I don't know, you know, they didn't come out exactly like I wanted, but it's an interesting concept. You sort of have the upside down effect. So instead of pouring from the top, I'm pouring these, this black striping from the bottom and then allowing it to flow up. I don't know, kind of neat. I, I need to refine it a little bit, but it has some uh, potential. Just, you know, kind of, Killing time here while the microwave's cooking. All right, so even though today's video is really focused around one color, we're still gonna do a color of the day at the end. Stay tuned for the end of this video to see this video's color of the day. All right, it's time to build some color here. So we're gonna put some watermelon on this side. All right, get that stirred up. Overcooked my plastic a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, you know what? We forgot an ingredient. Let me go run over to my shelf and get it. Uh, what an amateur move. Okay, so on the other side, we want this violet highlight. And we do not want to spare it. A lot of times, whenever you use highlight, you're adding a little bit of it to enhance an, uh, an existing color base, sort of like color shift. However, we're gonna put a lot of this stuff in there because that is the base of that side. And you know, powder requires a lot of stirring, especially that much powder. But uh, anyway, yeah, we're gonna be here for a minute. I hope y'all can see that on camera. You can, you can see the pink in person really well. It's absolutely gorgeous stuff. So Dead On Plastics makes one of their Paragon colors called Beauregard, which is like an already liquid version sort of uh, of this effect. It has that violet highlight. So you could absolutely substitute that for the raw powder and it would actually be a little bit easier to use. 
Um, I just know this color from how I did it a couple weeks ago. You know, you can see all the powder clumps there. You don't really get that with the dead-on Paragon colors. That's the advantage. Um, but anyway, we're going to keep stirring until this is ready. As you can see, it's really pretty. It's got that pink sheen to it. And then we're going to enhance it. Okay, so our two color bases are looking pretty good here. And what we're going to do to the uh, highlight side is we're actually going to add some black grape. Okay, and this will, quote, purple it up a little bit which I think makes it look nice. So that was just a few drops and look at the difference already. You can noticeably tell that it's more purple. All right, looking good, but I want a little bit more. You know, this is all to taste. Add it to taste, just like cooking food, just like building a food recipe. That's kind of my approach to bait making. Do everything until it tastes good. That's kind of the, I don't know. That's just how I see it. Now we need some flakes. So on the watermelon side, we're gonna go with, like I said, this big purple flake, and this will kind of complement that. That's why I'm calling this color watermelon purple or watermelon purple pearl. You know, Zoom has watermelon red pearl. This is watermelon purple pearl, people. All right. And then now we're going to uh, also add a little bit of gold also to the watermelon side. I think that'll look really nice. Okay. We're going to add some small black flake to the watermelon side. So far, all the flakes going over here. Maybe a little bit more. It's like adding pepper on your food. And we're going to add some of that medium black flake that we talked about to the purple side because the purple side needs some love too and i'm using my large spoon here that's a half teaspoon okay so we're putting lots of flake in because these are both measured out to the two cup if i was using my little one cup uh measuring cups you know i would be using smaller amounts of flake okay yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay. Oh yeah, looking good. We are about there. We are about there. Yeah, so that that's pretty much it. You know, from here you can thicken or, um, you know, I mean, add, add a little bit more pigment, add a little bit more purple, a little bit more highlight, just however you want to do it. But that is the color. So the uh, watermelon side was starting to bubble up. Whoa, y'all see that cloud just hit? Like the lighting just completely changed in here. The watermelon side was starting to bubble up the more I mixed. Uh, so I threw that in the uh, vac pot and things are looking pretty good. Now here's something to keep in mind. Whenever you are laminating a regular pigment base with a powder base, that powder, it's going to bleed over a lot more into uh, the pigment base. So you really need to get your temperatures low and you really need to get your temperatures even. Um, there's just something about, I think it's because the powder is so visible. I think you always have a little bit of natural bleed over, but you don't really see it as much. But when that powder touches that side, boom, it, it sticks out. So the bleed over is a lot more obvious and you're getting sloppier laminates. Right, so that's pretty low. So uh, I think we're gonna go with that. All right, we are zoomed way out, and let's see what happens. Okay, let's see how we did. Let's open one up. Okay. Oh yeah, that's pretty. See, and you know that you kind of got the sides right, the, the two halves right, 
whenever you see really gorgeous blending in the tails. So if one color was just way too strong, um, I don't think you would see kind of some of that cool tail bonding there, or tail blending. Does that make sense? I don't know, it may not. Yeah, really cool. Beautiful. And of course, you know, the more translucent you mix the two halves, the more blending you'll see in the extremities. Yeah, those are pretty. I've never made this color in this mold. I've only made it in the action worm. And like I said, it's still a brand new, a brand new experience. Let's get, um, let's get some of these other ones out here. Let's see how they did. Usually the way one mold goes, as go the other ones. Also goes the other one. All right, yeah, so here's some of that bleed over that I was telling you about, right? You can see how visible the bleed over is. Now, anyone that watches my channel knows I'm a fan of not perfect laminates, simply because no straight lines in nature. So some of this bleed over to me is pretty awesome. I mean, it looks a lot more natural, um, but if this was a traditional laminate where both sides were pigment based and not, and not that powder base, you really would not see any of this bleed over. That's just kind of my personal opinion on it. And here's the third mold there. A little bit of bleed there at the bottom, but there again, I kind of like it. You just don't want it to be so bad that it no longer looks like a laminate. That's, that's my thing, you know, you can see the laminate did pretty well. All right, here we go with round two. So uh, here's a look at the blending block and you know the contents of the blending block you want to reuse, right? There's our two halves. You know, every little bit helps, you know? That, that might be the difference between that extra cavity filling versus not filling. You know, same, same with your injector plugs here. You know, all of this is not waste. And you want to try to get all of this stuff eventually back into the cup and back into the molds. All right. Yeah, just like that. And you know, after, after just two runs, look at, look at how much of each color that we have. And you know, I mean, that's, that's a whole mold work right there. All right, and real quick, we'll go through uh, round two here. Oh yeah, I don't see any bleed over on those. Those look really clean. Check the other side. Whoops. Yeah, those turned out really clean. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't get much cleaner than that. Unfortunately, I don't always get them that great. All right. But, you know, keep the temperatures low and keep, keep the temperatures even, and that usually makes for good even laminates. Yeah, those are looking really good. A little bit of bleed over there, but it's kind of sexy. All right, and let's look at this last one here. Yeah, I'm liking these so far. It To me, this color actually looked better in the action worm than it does in a creature bait. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Some colors are just fire in a worm, fire in a crawl, but then, you know, maybe you go make them in a frog or you make them in a I don't know, a ice fishing bait or a panfish bait, and they just don't look as good. Not every color is just a bombastic in every mold. Okay, we're changing it up. That's not the stinger molds. 
Which molds are they? Let's find out. Feeling good? Okay, what's the mystery mold? Drum roll, please. Let's find out. It's a very similar bait. <clears throat> if I can get it open. Y'all know it. Punch bugs. Oh. And it looked like they laminated really well. I don't see hardly any bleed over. Oh yeah, look at that. Let's see if we can get them uh, to where we can kind of see both sides a little bit at once. Get a variety going. Look at that, you guys. You know, I think it works better in this. Actually, I think it just kind of blends it a little bit better in the extremities, you know. Like here, we're looking at the uh, pink side, but those little arms right there have a lot of that watermelon in it. And that's kind of more what it looked like in the action worm. Okay, so we may just run punch bugs for the rest. Oh yeah, there's both of them right there. So cool. Oh, I love laminates. Gosh, they're just the best. Laminates are just the best, and that's a pretty good one. Alrighty, moving on. All right, so I emptied the contents from the two larger cups back into our sprue cups, and now these become the cups that we operate out of. So I'm gonna remelt those down, probably take about two or three minutes, and, uh, and then we'll have more plastic ready for more molds. And just like that, we have more plastic ready to roll. We're gonna run some more bugs, and basically just see how much we can get. All right, punch bug round two. We ran out of plastic on that mold, so that mold right there is going to suck. Okay, so here's the second run of punch bugs, and they did really well. The mold that didn't fill in, the, uh, wait a minute, that's the one that did fill in. <laughs> the one that did not fill in all the way, the top two um, had, had pockets in them, but there just wasn't enough plastic to fill those last two cavities. Uh, but the other six did well, so we are about done. Okay, so before we line up all of the watermelon purple pearl baits, I wanna show you today's color of the day. We have some more swim bait blend, and this is a color that I like to call Disco Shad. It's really similar to another color of the day that we did recently, uh, Mint Chocolate Chip. Again, it's blue highlight base. So the only thing in it is a teensy weensy amount of blue highlight, all right? So let's get that stirred in a little bit. I'm not gonna show you the whole stirring process. Again, pearls take a little bit of extra stirring time, um, but golly, they're so beautiful. So we're gonna stir in this blue highlight and then we're gonna add our flake. Okay, yeah, you can see that kind of nice little blue highlight look there. And here's what makes it really cool. String cut hologram flake. Isn't that cool? Check this out. Ooh, all right, just about a quarter teaspoon of that. That stuff is so cool, that string cut. You know, I don't use string cut very often. Um, in fact, this is really the only time. Yeah, check that out. That is so cool. And uh, we're gonna make it in a jerk bait, okay? And that is today's color of the day. There it is. Disco Shad. Oops. And uh, you really don't see the hologram effect the best in, unless it's in person. But uh, yeah, really cool. Single one out here. Yeah, really, really nice color. Disco Shad Jerk Baits. That is today's color of the day. 
All right, my little Bates tray. I should probably get an actual, like, good new cookie sheet. You can see where I laid a bunch of swim baits on it. <laughs> all right, let's check it out. Yeah, look at all this. I mean, that, oops, is a ton of goodies. Nice mound of stingers. Two mounds of punch bugs. Those punch bugs are just the coolest. Man. Yeah. What do y'all think of the color? I'm digging it. I think it is wonderful. I think it is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. One last thing. That's all of our leftover there. So we whittled it down pretty much all the way. I'm, I probably could, you know, open pour this and some stuff. That's not a whole lot left to work with as far as injection goes. So that's pretty much about all we could get. And that's, that's a lot of goodies for only four cups of plastic. So, you know, you can really make this stuff go a long way. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Just sort of like a little bait blog necessarily. This wasn't like a new technique or educational necessarily. Um, this is just, hey, I like this color. I want to show it to you guys, and I wanted to see what it looked like in my creature mold, and uh, and then found out that it works really well in the punch bug mold. So it's definitely a color I'll probably keep coming back to. There's there's a handful of, of injection colors that I just, I always come back to them. Every once in a while, I'm just like, I have to make that color again. And uh, I think this will be one of them. So definitely, uh, if anyone tries this at home, please tag me on Instagram. Um, you'd find me on Facebook. I'd love to see your interpretation and see what molds you uh, discover that it works well in. So um, hit me up with some feedback on that color if anyone tries it, and uh, I would certainly be thrilled to see. So we're out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.